So before anything else, let me introduce to the topical workbook for computer science 2210-0478. This is the workbook one for, for paper one, basically computer systems. And as you can see from the table of contents, I've included questions on each and every subtopic from the syllabus along with the mark scheme. And these are some of the actual questions, actual pages uh, as a preview from the workbook section 1.1, 1.3, 2.2, 3.2, 2 5.3 cyber security and artificial intelligence. This is just to show you a glimpse of what type of questions are included in the workbook. There are many 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 more questions where these come from and around 18 to 20 to questions on an average are included for each and every topic. A must buy if you want to boost your grade. Similar to the paper 1 workbook, I have designed a paper workbook for paper 2 as well. This is for algorithm, programming and logic uh, for CIEs either 2210 or 0478 GCE or IGCSE computer science. As you can see, it contains questions on every subsection of the syllabus content for paper 2 along with the mark scheme so you can understand each and every question each and every um, algorithm these are some of the few pages from the workbook just to give you a glimpse of what type of questions are included as you can see this is 7.1 this is 7.7 8.3 and section 10 boolean logic so um, a lot more questions are included in the workbook a must buy if you want to have a very good score in your Cambridge examination order now assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh welcome to another physics lecture so we were discussing section 4.5 the electromagnetic effect now let's continue on magnetic effect of a current last time we had discussed till here the AC generator when a current flows through a conducting wire a magnetic field is produced around the wire a conducting wire is any wire that has current flowing through it the shape and direction of the magnetic field can be uh, investigated by using by uh, plotting compasses around the wire the compass compasses would produce a magnetic field line pattern the magnetic field is made up of concentric circles now the circles which are closer to the wire are uh, placed close together as it indicates the stronger magnetic field whereas as you move away from the wire the circles are uh, at a larger distance from each other because the magnetic field is a weakening. A circular field pattern indicates that magnetic field has no poles. As the distance from the wire increases the circles get further apart. Now uh, the right hand thumb rule can be used to work out the direction of the magnetic field. Reversing the direction in which the current flows through the wire will reverse the direction of the magnetic field. If there is no current flowing through the conductor, there will be no magnetic field. Increasing the amount of current will increase the strength of magnetic field. This means that magnetic field lines will become closer to each other. Magnetic field around a solenoid. Now what exactly is a solenoid? When you wrap, when you uh, make a wire looped into a coil that is known as a, uh, uh, and you put some magnetic material inside that that is known as a solenoid when a wire uh, when a wire is looped into a coil the magnetic field lines circle around each part of the coil passing through its center to increase the strength of magnetic field uh, it should be coiled to form a solenoid the magnetic field around the solenoid is simil similar to that of a bar magnet magnetic field around and through a solenoid the magnetic field inside solenoid is strong and uniform one end of the solenoid behaves like a north pole and the other one behaves as a south pole to work out the polarity of each end it uh, you need to view it from an end 
if the current is traveling around in a clockwise direction then it is the south pole if the current is uh, traveling in an anti clockwise direction that means it is a north pole if the current changes direction then the north and south pole are reversed if no current is flowing then there will be no magnetic poles and no magnetic fields for example this is a solenoid now you'll have to view it, view it from this side if the current is moving in this direction over here means in clockwise direction that means this is the south pole and this would be the north pole and if current is flowing in this direction in the anti clockwise direction then this means it would be south pole a solenoid can be used as an electromagnet by adding a soft iron core into it the iron core will become an induced magnet when current is flowing through the coils the magnetic field produced from solenoid will create a much stronger magnetic overall effect because the coil as well as the soft uh, magnetic material they will combine together their magnetic strengths would add together and they'll produce a stronger magnet than their individual counterparts the magnetic field produced by an electromagnet can be switched on and off which we have discussed before as well the diagram shows an electromagnet how can the strength of the magnetic field be increased a remove the metal core no that is not possible b remove the metal core again not possible reverse the dc supply and increase the current uh, that would simply uh, decreasing the current would uh, and reversing the dc supply no not possible if you decrease the current the magnetic field would also decrease reverse the dc supply and increase the current yes increasing the current is the keyword over here reversing the supply means now resistor would be on the negative terminal see in this uh, circuit the resistor is connected to right now positive terminal if you reverse the supply it would be on the negative side this would become negative terminal so that the resistor would almost become a uh, unusable as all of the current from the positive terminal will run through this coil producing a much better magnetic effect producing a greater uh, greater uh, magnetic field hence d is the right answer an electric current in a wire is into the page means it is going inside the page from your side to inside the page which diagram shows the shape and direction of the magnetic field around the wire if it is going inside the field use the uh, right hand thumb rule and uh, place your thumb towards the screen towards this image and then curl your fingers then you would know that uh, the fingers fingers are curling in this direction in the clockwise direction so, so that means either a or c should be the answer now before we have studied that as you go away from the wire the field lines become further apart whereas over here all the field lines are equal distance that means this cannot be our answer and c is the right answer application of the magnetic effect electromagnets are used in a wide variety of applications including relay circuits which are used in electric bells electronic locks scrap yard cranes etc and in loudspeakers and headphones let's take a look at how these things work now what is a relay circuit relays are switches that open and close by the action of an electromagnet a relay circuit consists of an electrical circuit containing an electromagnet a second circuit with a switch which is near to the electromagnet in the first circuit now a relay circuit we have studied before as well in the practical electricity so this is a simple relay circuit when a smaller circuit having a lower current is used to turn on a bigger circuit with greater current into it when a current flows through circuit 1 a magnetic field is produced that uh, turns this coil into a electromagnet it 
causes this bar of iron to be attracted completing the circuit and this circuit uh, and this lamp or this load is turned on whereas when you shut off this switch this goes back from being an electromagnet to just a piece of iron hence it is no longer attracting this the circuit is broken and the lamp turns off electric bells also utilize similar L uh, relay circuits to function example question the diagram shows a relay switch to switch on an electric motor here is the relay switch having an electromagnet and here is a motor this is a secondary circuit a student makes five statement to explain how relay switches turns on the electric motor relay switches on the electric motor one the current in the coil magnetizes the electromagnet the armature closes the contact this is the armature the current in the secondary circuit makes the motor turn the electromagnet attracts the iron armature the switch s is closed now what should be the correct order first of all the switch s should be closed so that means the starting should be 5 then the current in the coil magnetizes the electromagnet next we would have the electromagnet attracts the iron armature and then we would have the armature closes the contact which allows the current in this secondary circuit to flow through and turn on this motor so D should be our right answer the diagram shows an alarm system in which the switch S is closed the top circuit is arranged so that the electromagnet is positioned over the uh, soft iron contact. What happens when the switch S is opened? Right now it is closed. That means this is an electromagnet and it is attracting this iron contact. Now when you would open this switch, when you would, then what would happen? The circuit would break. This would no longer be an electromagnet. This iron contact would, would fall down. This circuit would become complete and the bell would ring. So the iron contact would drop and the bell is going to ring. What happens when the switch S is opened? Yes, you can read the description as well. Next use of uh, electromagnet is in uh, loudspeakers and headphones. Those who already who are studying computer science and have seen my lecture about output devices. So we have already discussed the working of a speaker or a loudspeaker in computer science. 2210 or uh, 0478 as well but if you are a bio student or you are not currently studying computer science then we'll discuss some of the details over here as well loudspeakers and headphones are traditionally devices that convert electrical signals into uh, sound waves they work due to the motor effect means when current is passed into a coil it rotates or vibrates that is known as the motor effect whereas if you uh, rotate or move a coil and it produces current that is known as the generator effect a loudspeaker consists of a coil of wire that is wrapped around one pole of a permanent magnet a an alternating current passes through the coil this causes or this creates a changing magnetic field around the coil as the current is constantly changing direction the direction of the magnetic field will be constantly changing this uh, makes the coil vibrate or move the in uh, the direction of the force at any instant can be determined using Fleming's left hand rule now when the coil moves it uh, vibrates the air molecules around it producing sound waves here is the inner working or in a of a speaker as well this is the cone it is connected to a wire a coil that is wrapped around one pole of a permanent magnet now when electricity is provided to this wire it vibrates causing that cone to vibrate as well the amplitude or the uh, power of the um, AC current determines how much it will vibrate and how louder the sound produced would be so we have basically discussed these points as well there is a wiring current in the coil of a loudspeaker the loudspeaker is producing a sound the magnet is clamped means the magnet is fixed clamp means fixed it is unable to move what is vibrating to produce the sound coil only cone only no not possible magnet only magnet doesn't move at all if the magnet starts moving then you'll get no sound from your speaker 
the coil and cone yes both the coil and the cone have to vibrate in order to produce sound if only any one of them is moving you will not hear any sound in fact the cone cannot um, vibrate on its own without the ma uh, without the coil force on a current carrying conductor a current carrying conductor produces its own magnetic field when interacting with an external magnetic field it therefore ex will experience a force so when a conductor is having current it will only experience a force if the current through it is perpendicular to the direction of magnetic field lines if they are not perpendicular there would be no force a simple situation would be a copper ro copper rod produced within a uniform magnetic field when current is passed through the copper rod it experiences a force which makes it move two ways to reverse the direction of the force by reversing the direction of the current or by reversing the direction of the magnetic field now over here we would have the flamings left hand rule when you have uh, when you have to calculate the force on a current carrying conductor then you have to apply the flamings left hand rule which states that if you place your uh, l uh, the first finger second finger and thumb of your uh, left hand in this way that they all three of them are perpendicular to each other then your thumb points towards the force or the motion your first finger points towards the magnetic field or the magnetic flux whereas your second finger points towards the direction of the current okay you can just read this out we have already discussed this in our previous uh, lecture charged particles in a magnetic field when a current carrying wire is placed in a magnetic fe uh, field it will experience a force this is because the magnetic field will exert a force on each il individual electron flowing inside that wire therefore when a charged particle passes through a magnetic field the field will also exert a force on that charged particle depending on its uh, nature of the charge causing it to deflect the force is always at 90 degrees to both the direction of travel and the magnetic field lines which can be worked out by using left hand rule in case of electrons the second finger points in the opposite direction to the direction of motion conventional current is said to flow opposite to the direction of flow of electrons the finger represents the current an alternative is to use the right hand to work out direction of charged particles so you are going to have an image like this in your question if it is about charged particles in a magnetic field now usually the positive particles deflect in this direction and the negative ones deflect in this direction but ultimately you can conclude this by using the left hand rule if the particle is traveling perpendicular to field lines it will experience the maximum force if the particle is traveling parallel to field lines it will not experience any force if the particle is traveling at an angle to the field it would experience a smaller force example question the diagram shows a beam of electron electron means negatively charged particles the magnetic field is directed into the pane now what is the direction of deflection of electrons now use the left hand rule put your left hand out in this way then you would see in between if you are still confused how to place your uh, the how to apply the left hand or right hand rule then here's a picture of a hand this is the left hand rule and in similar way you'll arrange your uh, first three fingers of the right hand to apply the right hand rule here are some more images to give you a clearer picture f b i you can learn uh, uh, remember it by using this acronym force b means magnetic flux and i means current uh, this is the curling of the th this should have been the right hand but it shows you how to apply the dynamo rule uh, with curling fingers around a solenoid okay so what is the direction of the deflection of electrons as they enter the magnetic field now the magnetic field is into the page now arrange arrange your um, left hand now 
into the field means your first finger should point towards the page or towards the screen and uh, the direction uh, and the current is supposed to be if the beam of electron is coming from left to right that means the direction of current would be from right to left so arrange your second finger in the direction that it is uh, pointing towards the left and uh, your first finger is pointing towards the page then you would see that your thumb is pointing downwards so that means that uh, D should be the right answer down the page a horizontal beam of electrons pass between two poles north and south now the over here the direction of magnetic field would be from now north to south the direction of current would be from right to left So what would be the direction of deflection again use the left hand rule and you will quickly see by that it the answer would be B out of the page because your first finger would your uh, second finger would point downwards your uh, the and uh, sorry uh, would uh, sorry your first finger would point downwards your second finger would uh, point from left to right so your thumb will point towards yourself so that means it would be out of the page last but uh, not the least we have the DC motor now I would want we have only a this topic left so I would like to conclude it in this video what is the DC motor it is basically the opposite of AC generator when AC the coil in AC generator is turned it produces EMF or electricity whereas in a DC motor electricity is provided to a rectangular coil inside a magnetic field making it turn now what you need to remember is that in the splitting rings in a DC motor there is a gap in between so that the current is broken after every half cycle so that the motor uh, or the this ring keeps on uh, this uh, rectangular coil keeps on rotating in the same direction always or in the clockwise direction always whereas in the AC generator there is no space between the split rings so how this happens it works in a similar way as the AC generator that coil in reference position 0 upward forces on the left side which causes it to move and downward forces on the right hand side making the coil turn and the coil rotates to position 90 degrees when th it is at 90 degrees the split ring cuts off the current to the coil no uh, electromagnetic force is acting but the momentum of the coil makes it rotate slightly beyond its vertical position like instead of being totally vertical it becomes a little tilted again causing the cycle to uh, cause a force and this keeps on moving current passes through the coil again and uh, the circle moves on basically when you provide a this rectangular coil with some current due to the kit effect of the magnetic field the conductor or the wire, a wire or the coil uh, starts to move and since it only has one direction to move in like uh, in a circular way plus we have left some space inside the split rings it will always keep on moving in this clockwise direction now what does the split ring commutators do they reverse the current direction in the coil every half a turn and allows the coil to always turn in the clockwise direction this is the function of split rings inside a DC motor you should remember it what factors affect the speed of rotation large turning effect is higher speed and uh, that would mean that uh, you would have the same factors that co uh, that uh, affect the strength of a turning effect would uh, cause the motor to move at a higher speed another thing what you can do is to increase the speed of a DC motor that encapsulate these things inside a metal cylinder like you might have seen uh, D motors are usually 
in a cylindrical uh, shape see as you can see here most of the motors are in a rather cylindrical shape why is that because when you include a soft iron cylinder around the motor it is highly permeable to magnetic field which allows the magnetic field to be more concentrated at the coil which increases the magnetic field strength and producing a larger turning effect and a higher speed plus what you can do is provide it with a greater current increase the number of turns in the coil use a uh, magnets with greater strength and the fourth point would be that use a iron cylinder around the motor to increase its speed example question the coil of a simple motor lies between the poles of permanent magnet the coil rotates about its axis what decreases the frequency of rotation uh, increasing the number of turns no this would increase it reversing the current again this would just this would simply means that the coil would keep on moving in the same direction using a lower voltage supply now if you apply a lower voltage less current then the speed would decrease using a strong magnet no this would again wrong answer this would cause the, cause the increase uh, speed to increase last topic of the this last subtopic of this the transformer a transformer is a device that changes a high alternating voltage at low current to a low alternating voltage with high current basically if you are having a supply a electric supply with low voltage and high current so it converts it into high voltage and low current if you are having vice versa low current supply and high voltage then it would convert it into low voltage and high current basically out of current and voltage the quantity which is higher and the quantity which is lower a transformer basically switches them high current is converted into low current and high voltage is converted into low voltage and vice versa a structure of transformer it has two sets of coil one is known as a primary coil and the second one is known as a secondary coil uh, let me show you an image like this and inside uh, and between these uh, this is the primary coil this is the secondary coil and inside those coils there is a soft iron core the primary coil is connected to the primary input voltage whereas the secondary coil is what gives you your output voltage the number of turns in primary coil is known as NP and the number of turns in the secondary coil is known as NS whereas the primary voltage is denoted by VP and secondary voltage is denoted by VS. The coils are wound, uh, wound around a laminated soft iron core which consists of thin sheets of soft iron insulated from one another. The lamination of the soft iron core reduces the heat loss due to induced currents that would be formed in an otherwise unlaminated core and if current is indu uh, uh, if heat is produced in uh, the soft iron that would mean it would increase its resistance causing the current to drop uh, that is why the sheets in a soft iron core are always laminated I s there are two types of transformer a step up and a step down transformer what the step up transformer does it converts uh, low it ha step up transformer has low uh, emf or low input voltage but a higher output voltage a step down transformer has high input voltage and a low output voltage and by the diagram how you can uh, see which transformer is step up which is step down simple rule if the primary coil has more number of turns it is a step up cross uh, it is a step down transformer if the primary coil has lower number of turns than the secondary coil it is a step up transformer okay so if primary coil has less number of uh, has greater number of turns it is a step down if primary coil has less number of turns as compared to secondary coil it is step up transformer it, now there is only one formula that you need to remember that is uh, uh, that is used in this topic well two actually but uh, it's not uh, so difficult we uh, th th these are basically two ratios which we use to calculate the voltage and uh, number of the relationship between voltage and number of turns of a transformer 
Vs means voltage in secondary coil divided by voltage in primary coil is always equals to the, the number of turns of secondary coil divided by number of turns of primary coil or you can say the ratio between primary uh, secondary and primary voltage is always equal to the ratio between secondary and primary num uh, the number of turn of secondary and primary coil whereas the power in transformer can be calculated by, uh, by using this formula always remember the power dissipated in primary coil is always equal to the power dissipated in secondary coil so IP means current in primary coil multiplied by voltage in primary coil would always be equal to current in secondary coil multiplied by voltage in secondary coil problems and improvements to the transformer heat can be generated in the wires causing inefficiency in transfer of electricity so in order to solve it out make the wires thick as this will reduce resistance magnetic field lines can leak away so not all lines pass through the secondary coil for as a so solution use a circular core instead of a rectangular core current induced in core can circle around heating up the core to solve it out make core from thin laminated sheets the lamination is to prevent loss of energy via heat uh, whereas non laminated core would dissipate a lot of heat energy hence reducing the efficiency of transformer these points would actually help you out in your paper for the ATP example question a 12 volt lamp glows at normal brightness when connected to the secondary coil of a main transformer the mains voltage is 240 volt the transformer is 100% efficient primary coil has 200 turns how many turns are there on the secondary coil simply apply the formula Vs upon, uh, divided by Vp equals to Ns divided by Np now you are told the number of turns of uh, primary coil the input voltage and the output voltage obviously it has uh, if the lamp is gro uh, glowing at normal brightness that means the output voltage are 12 so use three these three things you can ignore this and uh, put them in the formula cross multiply and you get the answer as 10 so A would be your answer a transformer has 4800 turns on primary coil and 480 on its secondary coil so the ratio is basically 10 is to 1 the primary coil is connected to a 240 volt AC supply the secondary coil is connected to a lamp how does the output current in the lamp compares with the input current now so uh, this is about the current and the options are higher frequency AC lower frequency AC current in one direction only the same frequency AC the answer would be D because a transformer does not affect the frequency of a current or the of AC it only uh, steps up or it steps down the voltage or the current a transformer with an efficiency of 100% has primary voltage of 600 volt and a secondary voltage uh, of 240 volts so you are getting 240 as output the secondary coil is attached to a resistor of 120 ohms what is the power dissipated in the resistor and what is the current in the primary coil now first of all use V equals to IR on this resistor to find the amount of current so you would get something like uh, V equals to IR so uh, V divided by R would give you I 240 divided by 120 would give you 2 so that means this is having a um, current of 2 ampere now put that into the formula power equals to I square R and you would get 4 into um, 2 to the 4 and R is 120 so 4 into 120 480 watts would be the power now we have studied that power in both coils is always equal so that means the power dissipated in primary coil is also 480 so that simply means that either C or D would be our answer now next we have to calculate the current in the power dissipated in resistor we have calculated what is the current in the primary coil now the formula for voltage and current is VP into IP equals to VS and uh, to IS so over here we know 
the voltage for both and the current for this so using this we can calculate the current in this means uh, 2 ampere multiplied by 240 would be equal to 600 volt multiplied by I P means the current in primary coil simply cross multiply and you'll get something like 0 0.7877 so round it off to 0 0.8 so that means C would be your correct answer transmission of electrical power during the transmission and distribution of electrical energy there is a power loss due to joule heating the power loss is given by PL means power loss equals to I square R this is the basic formula for power we have studied this before as well in order to reduce the power loss we have to minimize current and resistance so that power loss can be minimized so as a solution we use very thick cables uh, but thick cables are heavy and expensive hence the better option is to reduce current in order to reduce current we can employ step up transformers to increase the transmission voltage and reduce the current so when some AC is created in a power station it goes through a step up transformer that converts the output voltage into 25 or 11,000 voltages which are then distributed throughout the transmission grid oh, near the homes or offices there are step down transformers that convert the 10 or 8 or 11,000 volt or 25,000 volt back into 220 volts or 230 volts and supply it to your houses but since you'll be supplying a very higher voltage that means your current would be very low and that would mean that the power loss would be greatly reduced as the value of I would be minimized example question electrical power is transmitted by cables over long distance what are the effects of using a high voltage transmission power loss in the cable would be very low and the current in the cable would also be low we have just discussed that so only D would be our answer that is it I know this lecture got a little um, longer uh, but as your ATP is approaching and this consisted of some important points that may come in your ATP so I had to go through with it all the best for your exam I hope you have understood everything if you have any issues feel free to contact me just leave it your query in the comments below I'll make sure to answer it take care Allah Hafiz